it was stupefying. I was just, my jaw could not have been on the floor anymore. So I want to talk about the experience that happened to me on Thursday night here in the Maloka, which was the third ayahuasca ceremony. And for this ceremony, I had an intention to focus on what I am, to kind of try and put aside the past and those things that I don't want to be, those that which doesn't serve me anymore, and really to focus on what I am. So to do that, I took a, uh, a larger dose. And yeah, this was the most, by orders of magnitude, this was the most deepest, most profound experience I have ever had on ayahuasca. It was absolutely mind blowing. So I, I took my dose and I went, to, I went and sat back on my mat. And even before the Icaros had started, I realized that this was gonna be a, a pretty heavy night because even in the darkness, the pitch black of this room, um, spirits were just appearing before me, sort of these kind of little spirit faces and th the room was just gradually filling up with them and they were kind of, they were inching closer and they were very curious. They were sort of looking at me and it's sort of, what's going on with this guy here then? And I was completely comfortable with this. I was like, guys, come, come explore. I, I invite you to come and, come and, you know, see what's going on. And just more and more spirits kept filling up the room. And then at the point where the, the shaman's ikaro started, the whole room just exploded into psychedelia. This was, at this point, a full-on DMT breakthrough. Just the room was completely replaced by the sort of the bright cartooniness of the DMT experience. And yeah, I mean, I, and this was, it was just, so far, it was just absolutely amazing. And then I began to feel some nausea coming, which is again, perfectly normal. So I, I grabbed my bucket and this, is always a challenge. Um, I mean, it's a challenge being sick in a psychedelic experience anyway, but trying to find and align your head with a bucket while going through a complete reality swap of the kind of DMT experience, that's a whole new challenge. And I'm looking into my bucket, which in itself is just this ever evolving mandala, which is just exploding outwards and then back in on itself. And I'm just retching into my bucket and Entities are popping up and coaching me through this experience, saying, yep, yeah, you're doing great, you're doing great, just get it all out, thumbs up. You know, they're literally popping pop into my mind, like, yay, go for it. And there's, there was like a traffic light system at the top, saying, wait for it, wait for it. And then a green light would come and I'd go, go, and I'd bleh. I mean, and it was, being sick is difficult. It comes from like the root of your stomach. This ayahuasca just pulls stuff out of like the core of your being, which you didn't even know was there. So I was just going for it, getting all this stuff out and just the experience is just intensifying and intensifying. And eventually I get this kind of brief respite from the kind of the intense part of throwing up and just collapse back onto my mat. And then it just goes into a new level, which I would say is, is a level I've, I'm not even sure I've ever explored before. This was, this is kind of like what is beyond the breakthrough and it basically I was I was in a realm of godlike super beings of which I was one and all this and basically the entire knowledge of the universe and infinity was just being downloaded into my brain which was completely overwhelming but I'm in this place with all these other godlike beings and they are just singing and creating new dimensions and new laws of physics and new modes of being and new states of consciousness. They're just, they're just waving this all into existence just for the pure joy of doing it. And as they do each, each kind of motion and some kind of new universe just pops into existence, that universe in itself will just evolve into its most perfect form and will just bring like infinite joy and laughter to these beings. And these beings are all separate. 
they are all their own separate instance, but yet they flow into each other and merge with each other. And even the things that are being created are sentient and become alive and, and evolve and sing. And those things will begin to create their own creations. And this whole, it's just a constant feedback loop of joy and creation. It's, I mean, it was just magnificent. It was, it, it was, it was, I mean, it was, with the, the vastness, the scale of what was going on was utterly preposterous. It, it was happening on a universal, cross-dimensional scale. And it, it was amazing. It was amazing and I was part of it. And as I'm taking all this in, you know, parts of my monkey brain are just reeling in shock. I mean, this, this was staggering. So every so often they'd say, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. We understand that this is this is a lot for you. Just take a moment. So I'd take a breather, and then they'd like, let's go again, and it would all just kick off again. And yeah, I I believe what I was kind of experiencing was just pure creation. And you know, I've I've often referred to this as as the as like this is the universal consciousness. This is if consciousness isn't necessarily something that is tied to the physical body. If consciousness is something that exists um, separate from it, you know, after this, this meat suit as, as, as we've moved on from it, I believe that's what I was experiencing last night. It seemed like every experience is being collected together into just this, this, this kind of library of yeah, of experience itself. It's it was it's just stunning. I definitely got the, the feeling that this was um, this. There was separate instances of consciousness in there. This wasn't like a typical kind of like God is one thing and and we are all one thing. Although it was one thing, but within that one thing, God is creating separate aspects of itself and these aspects are individual and um, each, each aspect flows into each other. They all flow through the whole, but there were very distinct personalities and individuals within this place. It just felt like it, it was every, every bit of consciousness that ever could be merged into one, flowing into each, into each other, all happening just for the pure joy of it. It was, I mean, things were being created, en entire new systems of, of mathematics and celestial mechanics were being created with the wave of a hand just because it was amazing to do so. And they would all roll around laughing and sort of showing each other what, what they'd done. And there was just... The, the play, I remember there was so much respect and awe for each other in terms of what they were doing. They were all, everyone was interested in what everyone else was doing. Um, there was no hierarchy here. It was, there were people who were just dancing like the most super dimensional forms of ballet were on a par with, with the most intricate levels of quantum physics. In fact, these things were the same. The, the ballet dance and the physics and the, and the celestial mechanics, it was all the same thing. The, 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 underlying code of existence is it is one thing and it, it, it was stupefying I was just my jaw could not have been on the floor anymore so this was one of the most amazing experiences of my life it's it yeah, I think I'm, I'm just going to run out of words now as to how ridiculously awesome this was. But I suppose, a, a, you know, a question is, well, what did you get from it? Like, what was the point of all this amazing awesomeness other than just the spectacle of it? And I think this is, it's, the contrast here is between that ceremony and what happened on Tuesday night. So Tuesday night was where I had this very introspective, dark uh, night where I was completely tied to and experiencing all my pain and all my regret and loneliness about my mother. So this 
is kind of what I am not. This is what I don't want to be. I don't want to be someone who is defined by the pain and defined by their suffering and, and, and perhaps even inflicting that suffering on others because I just couldn't get over this tragic event. And I think the contrast here, this is why I was shown this on, on Thursday night, was this was just telling me that I am a creature of limitless potential and I can create my own reality. I don't have to be defined by these events of my past. And it was showing me, saying, look, you can do anything, anything. What just just to imagine it for a second and you can do that. That is, that is the potential within a human being, within a conscious system. The potential to just, just create whatever you want and love whatever you want and feel whatever you want. You can do this. And that is what I got from this experience. And it gave me so much hope and so much, so much joy and I mean, and it, it just completely bitch slapped me out of, <laughs> out of the, the kind of the funk that I was in because it was impossible to, to, to feel anything other than just awe and wonder for the, for the world, for, for the, this, this gift of existence that we have. So I, I intend to honor that. It's my, you know, I intend to, this life that was given to me by my mother, who then made her choices around her own life. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna honor what she gave to me. I'm gonna make this the best life that I possibly can. And, and to my mother, I, I thank her. I thank her for what she gave me and I forgive her for what she couldn't give me and I love her and I will miss her forever but I feel I'm ready to move on and I'm going to honour her by having the best life I can possibly have and I'm, I'm going to share all this love and all this amazingness with my wife and my kids and my friends and my family and anybody, anybody who I can help in any way, um, I'm, I just want everyone to experience a piece of this, this unconditional, unbridled joy that I experienced. So yeah, that's what happened to me on Thursday night.